at Daytona Auto Machine Works. And the reason is we're working on the engine today. So you guys are gonna get to see some of this engine build. So here we are. Main studs in. Okay. And then we're gonna do the main home. Mm -hmm. Straighten out the mains first. Uh, and then I'm gonna put it in the small boring machine, get it ready to board and then change and hone it after we're done with that. So that's basically about all I can really do until I get the crank back from being cut. Right. Uh, yeah, there's two or three journals on it that were like 2000s under spec. Mm -hmm. So better off getting it cut instead of running huge clearances. And that's not something that you could make up with the bearings itself? No. Okay. Uh, I mean, you want to, you got to keep your, your housing diameter the proper size. Yeah. To keep the proper crush fit on the bearing. Other than that, I mean, it's, it's all got to be within a couple tenths of a thousandths on the specs. Sure. So, I'll set up here. Such a cute little thing, isn't it? It is, it is. It's like working on a motorcycle engine i guess yeah i do i do a lot of those they had to send the crank out i guess to to have that turned down just a little bit so probably be a couple of days before the crank gets back um, and then once the crank is back then he's able to slap it on the balancer go through and they'll start balancing everything but for today what we're working on i believe is we um these are a nine millimeter and the main studs that I'm using are, these are ARP. 10 by 1.5. Yeah, 10 by 1.5s. And these are actually out of a, oh yeah, it says right there, BMW, okay? So if any of you guys are doing the same thing here, I would recommend going to a larger stud instead of the bolts that they give you. And so that's, that's the part number there. And you can see the length is appropriate for these. We just need to go a little bit bigger on them. We're a two-man shop and we get way too busy and sometimes the place just gets messy. Everybody is used to seeing what my garage looks like, so believe me, <laughs> you're, you're not messy by any means. So what are you working on right now? I'm going to set this up in here and I'm going to drill and thread for the new main studs, the oversized main studs. So I got a question for you then. So because we're adding weight with the pistons and the new rods and everything, does that mean that you'll be adding weight to the crank? Usually, yes. yes. Uh, we have to add like Mallory type of heavy metal that's weighs more than the cast. So just depending on what the weight is, like for example, if you went to a lighter piston, what they would be doing is they'd be removing weight from the crank uh, counterweights to balance. Again, everything wants to be balanced within the counterweights and the pistons and the rotating assembly. Um, in my case, because everything's heavier, they're going to have to add weight most likely to the crank to be able to make up for the additional weight of the pistons, the rods, and just the heavier duty setup basically. So nothing goes kaboom. That's the whole, that's the whole plan. Keep everything from going kaboom. I can either cut the hole bigger and thread the aluminum, or I can cut the hole even bigger yet and put a steel insert in there for the threads. Uh, I mean, typically I have no problem leaving it as aluminum, it just depends on the customer. All right, what well, would you think is the uh, safest? I think we'll run it as aluminum for now. Okay. And when I get to actually torquing everything down, depending on what the torque, how much torque it actually takes, uh, and I'll see how it actually pulls on it, and if I have any issues, then I'll put steel inserts in. So basically, we have the option to put a threaded steel insert in there, rather than just thread it right into the aluminum, just to get a better bite, um, get more torque on it, of course. We'll see where it comes in with just re-threading these to the 10 millimeter, and then if it feels like it needs a little bit more, he can always add the, the insert later. Right here, this, this is an air float, so I'm basically putting a centering pin in it. Come through there. 
I bet. These right here are, are the best place to torque these oh, yeah. to the top of the block to simulate the head being torqued on. Uh, on extreme high performance race engines, it's just it helps keep the bore more round for when everything's supposed to be together. Right. I mean, if I had one for this, I would definitely be putting it on there for what we're doing. end up having to do an insert. Why do you say that? Because it actually didn't remove the old threads. To get an insert that's a cast steel, right. that's a 10 by 1 5 thread to put in there to eliminate the threads. Right, right. So I'm going to have to get Mikey to order me a 10 by 1 5 insert and basically put it in like a helicoil. Yeah. I, I could run helicoils. But helicoils, I mean, you torque them two or three times and then they end up pulling out. So yeah. it's better just to go to a solid insert. But we're going to have to put an insert in it to make it nice and strong. All right. And unfortunately, the only ones I have right now are about that big around with a 10 and a half on the inside. And right. I don't want to put that in there because that'll wipe up the main surface and screw up the dowel holes. Can't do any of the home today, can you? No. You, you, you have to start in a process. You start with the mains first. And then you do the deck, and then you do the cylinders. Uh, you have to go in order because the way the way the block reacts to the work. When you torque these mains down, it puts pressure on the rest of the block. So if we're going to change the pressure that's going to go on the mains, it's going to change the pressure that goes on the cylinders, and it's going to distort it. I gotcha. And especially with these small aluminum engines, they tend to move around a lot when you put torque down into those nuts, bolts, and studs. So that's why it's got to be done in a very specific order. And unfortunately, it looks like we're going to probably have to stop the process of this today so they can get some of those uh, inserts here at the shop. Um, and then we'll, we may just have to pick that up some other time. And we do a bunch of 4G63s. These things, they're little, little monsters. I mean, they make 1,000 horsepower on 40 pounds all day long. Lot, lots of 4B11s, 4G63s. Uh, average builds 600 horse, just 20 pounds of boost. And then we got in, main stud install, and wise co pistons, and. Oh, yeah, see, nice this is. Gir nice girdle. That's what I need right there. Uh, I mean, they make, you can like have a custom billet aluminum girdle made uh, uh they already took the, the sr20 block out of here uh the company i was telling you about mosworks they make a billet main cap mm. and then like a two inch thick billet aluminum main girdle that ties everything together Dang. and those are the ones that push 2200 horse wow and i did i did the dart and, dart and dry sleeves in it i am concerned that there's very thin uh liners inside those cylinders um, usually, usually not. Usually, mm -hmm. when they those are cast in liners, mm -hmm. so they're they're usually it takes what three hundred thousandths to normally cut a liner out. So the liners are actually pretty thick. It's it's closed deck now, so that's the main concern with that is having the open deck and the, the cylinders flexing in the top. Right. So once you close deck that, that's going to make it nice and solid, and you really shouldn't have to worry about the sleeves in it at all. Yeah, and, and really the main reason I'm using this engine that I'm in, because these guys are, what, cast iron? Yeah, that's that's probably, a lot heavier. Probably three times the weight of mine, I guess. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Cool. Thanks, brother. Yeah, man. So, unfortunately, we can't do much more with the engine today. He didn't realize that when he cut those threads that there was still going to be some thread left. We're going to get the stud inserts here probably on Monday. Today is Friday. Um, and then hopefully I can get back out here on Tuesday, work a little bit more on the engine. So that's kind of where we're at for today. But uh, we'll try to get back, if I can, I will try to get back over here to the shop so I can get you guys some more footage of what's going on. All right, so I got something really cool in the mail today. Been dying to get my hands on this thing. Aha! We got a new spoolie boy, boys. Yes, sir. So I actually, uh, when I decided how much power I was going to want or be able to make with the Mirage 1.2 liter, I reached out to a couple of manufacturers, turbo manufacturers, kind of let them know what the goals were for the engine and what the project plans were. I hadn't really heard much back from a couple of them, but these guys responded and offered to sponsor uh, the new engine build with 
this little guy right here. So huge thank you to Pulsar Turbos. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that they are an Australian turbo company, but the turbos are made in China. Now, before you go drawing any conclusions about that, let me show you something. So this is the turbo, right, that I've been running for a while now that's been making, you know, about 220 horsepower on the dune buggy. And you guys know it's not an eBay turbo. This is a genuine board Werner, right? KO3 system. Well, I want you to look here. Look closely at the badge. So anyway, my point with that is it doesn't necessarily matter so much what the badge says on the product. What really matters is the company behind the product, the warranty, of course, you know, and how they handle their customer service and also how they build their units to tolerance and spec. Pulsar is kind of known a um, little bit in the uh, drag racing and the streetcar market. However, they are going to be putting out some products for the UTV market here pretty soon. So if you're into the side-by-sides, you're into the UTV market, check out the Pulsar Turbos. Ooh, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, boy. Check it out. What does it say? Dirt gear? Oh, no. Pulsar. Good enough. All right, so we've got some gaskets. Um, this is nice. They include, this looks like an oil restrictor to me, a feed. Uh, and that's because, yes, this baby, look what we got here. This is a GTX 2860R with a one bar billet wastegate. Now there's a few different trims you can get the 28, the GTX 2860s in. Is it gonna focus? I don't think it's gonna focus. It's not gonna focus. Well, the different trims um, is a, a, a 0.57 AR, 0.64, 0 0.72, and a 0.86 AR. This is the 64 AR. So it's a good compromise. If I had to take a guess, I would say it's gonna be good for definitely into the 350s. 350 horsepower. Um, I don't know much beyond that. It may get a little bit restrictive here on the turbine side, but we can always change to a different AR, different uh, turbine housing if we need to later on, which will be easy because this will all tie into my um, charge piping real easy. But uh, we've got about 45 mil, that guy, and we got, what we got here? We got, uh, about 40 mil, so only five mil larger um, across the neck there, the inside diameter. We've got ball bearing versus journal bearing. A lot of turbos have journal bearings. There's nothing wrong with the journal bearing turbo. They um, they just, the reason why these turbos spool a little bit faster is because, well, it's better design, but also because it's a uh, ball bearing, so less resistance, less friction, that sort of thing. But we do want to restrict some of the oil flow to this one, of course. Over here we have an eight blade billet compressor wheel. Uh, this little guy, I think it's a seven blade. We have a nine blade turbine. This is all GTX Gen 2. First impressions, not bad. I mean, the castings are done well. A new spoolie boy, boy. So uh, <laughs> that should give us, whoo, significantly more gusta, Gustavo. Yeah, man. Basically, we're doubling power. Uh, this guy's good for about 200 horsepower. This guy's good for, well, they're good for up to 475. Um, I don't know if this AR is going to be, it's probably going to be too restrictive for something like 475 horsepower. But, I mean, it's, it's going to be good for, I'm sure, 350 plus. So, really, the goal is uh, 350 at the crank. If we get 400 at the crank, I'm not going to complain too much. But, yeah, that's the deal.